Good morning. Let's keep in mind the CDC rules for COVID-19. The church recommend you wear a mask, but you but it's not mandatory. And masks are available if you want one. There will be an Ursha meeting Saturday, March the 25th at 9 o'clock. And Sister uh, Kraft is asking all Urshas to please attend. So that's Saturday, March the 25th at 9 o'clock a.m. Brother Raymond Brewer has misplaced his Bible. It's in a blue case, and he's looking for it. So he said, if you picked it up by mistake, just please return it. He says, it's been missing for three weeks now. <laughs> the North Shelby Democrat meeting is held on, Mar on Tuesday, March the 14th. We have an abundance of great tasting water in Chevy County. So what's the problem? What could possibly endanger our water supply, industrial development, blue over city growth? Invite your family and friends to Olympic Steakhouse in Milliton. And that's at 8500 Wickenville Road in Milliton. At six o'clock, please, please place meal orders and socialize at 6.35, the meeting will begin. And if you need any more information, please see Sister Mildred Johnson. Please remember and pray for our sick and shut-in. Brother Thomas Ray Warner, Brother Arthur Johnson, Brother Albert Moore, Brother Randy Garner, Brother Demetrius Johnson, Brother Vincent Johnson, Sister Georgia Goodman, Sister Ann Brewer, Sister Betty Fields, Sister Eula Pugh, Sister Diane Macklin, Sister Sadie Brewer, Sister Susie Guy, Sister Maddie McLean, Sister Dorothy Brown, Sister Joyce Ben, Sister Harry Ricks, Sister Gwendolyn Hackett, Sister Rochelle Guffin, Sister Sandy Garner, Sister Mary Pete and family, and Sister Marchetta Johnson. Please pray for our soldiers, school system, youth, students, teachers, principals, our doctors, nurses, hospital workers, essential workers, postal workers, and first responders everywhere. Thank you. And now in the hands of Brother Johnson. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. For this is the that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and I will be glad in this day. Can we just begin to just celebrate that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords just for him allowing us to assemble once again. We owe him a praise. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. The splendor of the king clothed in majesty and all the earth rejoice and all the earth rejoice he wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Say with me, how great is our God. And all to see how great, how great is our God. Oh, how great is our God. Say with me how great is our God. And all to see how great, how great is our God, yeah, the name that's above all names, you are worthy of our praise, my heart will say, how great is our God, yeah, the name that's above all names. You are worthy of our praise. My heart will say, How great 
Shame, deliver me in thy righteousness. Yeah. Bow down thy ear yeah. to me, deliver me speedily. Be thy rock house, there's no way, be thy strong rock for a house of defense to save me. For thou art my rock and my fortune, therefore, thy name save me, me, guide me. Pull me out of the net that they have laid proof for me. But thou art my strength. 
into thy hands I commit my spirit. Thou have redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. I have hated them that regard line vanity, but I trust in the Lord. Amen. I will be glad and rejoice in thy mercy, but they have considered my troubles, that have known my soul in adversity, yeah. and have not shut me up in the hands of enemies, that have set my feet in a large room. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eyes was consumed with grief, yea, my soul and my stomach. For my life is spent with grief, and my years with sigh. My strength faileth because of my iniquity, and my bones are consumed. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers, hearers, and the doers of his word. Yeah. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Our Father, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Gilfield. Tell God thank you. Thank you Secondly, I want to tell him how much I love him. Thank you. Thirdly, that his grace, his mercy is everlasting. I'm glad that he woke me up this morning. You see, I'm glad that God looked through false sorts of needs. God know that I need him. He don't need us. Amen. We're not doing God a favor. Amen. Amen. God is the healer. He's the deliverer. God is the one. God is able. He is worthy. John 4 and 24 said, God is the spirit. He said, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I'm glad to be here this morning. I'm glad to know that my God is able. I'm so glad to be safe for this morning. He didn't save me to be a knot on the law. 
He didn't set me free to act like I don't know him. But I tell God everywhere I go, I love the Lord. He heard my cry. Then he pitted my every groan. He saved me. He healed me. He delivered me. He set me free. And I just love to tell God thank you. As we come this morning to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for the giving spirit this morning. Thank you for joy in our hearts. Thank you for touching us right early this morning. Thank you for food, clothes, and shelter. Thank you for a mind on high. In your name we pray, Lord God. You are worthy to be praised. Thank you for the tithes and offerings that we have been given. But it's your time. It's your offering. It's your giving. It's your grace. It's your mercy. You are the one. You are the one that we give praises to. We thank you this morning for one more day. All the giving and all the joy. You gave us life. We thank you this morning. You gave us peace. Lord God, don't ever take my joy away from me. All this joy that I have. I thank you this morning for all the ties and giving and over. In Jesus' name, I thank you for the pastor. I thank you for his perseverance. I thank you for his enduring. I thank you for his faithfulness. I thank you for allowing God to use him. I thank you for his preached word. We need a word from you. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Thank God. Amen.
Jesus Christ, who is bigger than all of our problems. It's good to be here. I'm glad to be here. I'm happy to be here. Amen. Amen. I, I'm not one for complaining. Amen. So I'm not complaining about pushing the time forward. And if I be around when they turn it back, I don't plan on complaining. I'd be so thankful when my eyes come open in the morning. I find nothing 
to complain about. Amen. Praise God. I don't even complain about my wife's cooking anymore. It's, it's all good. She, she can take punishment. She can take punishment. 30 some years or almost 40 years she can take it but we, that's one way to stay together you have a lot of fun joking we, we joke all the time every day amen. amen find something funny about me and about her amen amen We are going to go to God's word. We're going to thank God for these preachers. Amen. 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 Let us believe in Mr. Hall and our officers down there. They, they, they are ministering angels also. Amen. Our issues, our choir musicians, and all of you that are in the audience, visitors, if they are in it. We thank God for all of you. Amen. Amen. We're going to go to God's word that's found in the book of Genesis. You shouldn't have a problem finding the book of Genesis. The 47th, 47th chapter of Genesis. We're going to read verses 7, 8, and 9. Hey. Hey. <laughs> oh yeah, I got one witness. Amen. 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 There you will find these words in the seventh verse of the forty-seventh number of Genesis. You will find these words. And Joseph brought in Jacob his father, and set him before Pharaoh. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Jacob, How old art thou? And Jacob said unto Pharaoh, The days of the years of my pyramids are an hundred and thirty years. Few and evil have the days of the years of my life been, and have not attained unto the days of the years of the life of my father in the days of their pyramids. Amen. You may be seated. You know, I trust God to give us a message out of that. Amen. We, how old are you? I'm a, 130. And out of these days, they are few in his summation. Out of these few days, they have been few and evil in his sight because he have not lived as long as his father. So even at 130, he's complaining about not living long. Amen, amen. Just let me stay here 130 years. Hey, amen. I guarantee you, I won't complain. If I do, you take me on out there and tell them to give me some stronger medicine than I'm taking. Amen. We're going to talk today about the clock is ticking. And life is short. The clock is ticking. And life is short. Thank you, Ursus. You may be seated. Amen. As short as time is, they want to mess with the time. Amen. Want to speed it up. But I got some news for you. You can't change time. You can change the adjustments on your clock, yeah. but you didn't change the time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God has established the time. Yeah. Amen. You can manipulate and do what you want to do, but you haven't changed the thing that God has established. Yeah. Yeah. But I want you to know that even though the clock is ticking, and our time is short. Yes. 
God is yet in control. God is yet in in control. Amen. Amen. In 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 the eight and ninth number of Psalms, you don't have to turn there, but in the eight and ninth number of Psalm, you will find that the psalmist is giving accolades to God for how he is caring for the church. And at the same time, he is kind of, shall we say, complaining to God about how short time is living here on earth. It seems like the way man look at it, you know, God's thoughts are higher than man's thoughts. We, we will never be able to think the way God really thinks. His, his thoughts are so high. We don't know what he has on his mind, and he doesn't feel it necessary to explain to us everything he does and why he does it. Hey, amen. He's sovereign. He, he does what he pleases when he pleases. Is that right? But it seemed like to some men, especially to this psalmist, that when God made man, he made man as an afterthought. In other words, he didn't have anything specific in mind when he made man because the reason why he says that is because man's stay here on earth is so, so short. Look like if man was all that important, that man would be here on earth a long, long, long time. But man's stay here is short. And it causes some men to think, what is the value of man? What is accomplished by man being here? Now, I'm sure God has something in mind. And I'm sure that some of us are accomplishing what God intended for us to. All of us are not, but some of us are. Hey, are, are you listening? And even though you may not understand why I tell you, is so short I want you to know God knows but I want to drop this on it was not God's intention uh, uh, intention from the beginning for it to be that short but sin was introduced into the into the equation and and sin has caused us to have shorter lifespans in the beginning, man lived a long time. They did live longer than Jacob. Yeah, Isn't that right? You look at Methuselah. He lived a long time, hundreds of years. But the only thing you'll find that he did was he lived. I don't read why he accomplished anything or did anything spectacular or anything that is noteworthy except he lived a long time. He could have just been in somebody's way. A long, a long time. Isn't that right? Yeah, yeah, but it just looked like because man's days are getting shorter and shorter and shorter and look like the days are passing by faster and and, and faster. Isn't that right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, it looked like we are unimportant. Or oh, it seems like we are Ill, irrelevant. It, 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 it looked like God just was doing something in his spare time and said, I believe I'll make man. And uh, I'll make him in my own likeness and in my own image. And I'm going to let him think and make his own decisions. I know he's going to mess up. You know what I mean? I, what I mean since I'm not going to allow him to be here long. I'm not going to make him out of expensive stuff. I'm going to make him out of dust. Just got, just got him a handful of dust and 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 moistened it and and formed him a man. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah. yeah, so it, it just looked like he, he wasn't thinking that we were going to be here for a long time because he knows everything. And he knows that if we were left to our own recognizance, that we were going to shorten our days. For everything that seemingly man liked to do, it shortens his life. We need sunshine, but we'll go out and lay on the beach out there until we just get cancer stroke. Amen. Now, now what I look like out there trying to get a tan? I find me a tree to get up out of here. And I don't like sand between my toes. So you won't find me on the beach. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But man does everything, you understand? I can remember when I used to smoke. Yeah, 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 yeah. and enjoy it. Yeah, hey, man, I could blow smoke rings. Just smoke, enjoying that which was killing me. Yeah. Uh, 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 isn't that right? Didn't want to run out, man. I rushed with French Sanford, man. I had to have me a pack of cigarettes. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah. And, and I had a, I had a propensity for a little alcohol. Yeah. No, I lied. I, I, it wasn't a little alcohol. I liked a lot of alcohol. I, 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 I was a lush. Yeah, I, I liked it. it. Yeah. And, yeah. There, and the more the people try to tell me, hey, you're killing yourself, though, yeah. the more I drank, the more yeah. I liked it. Everything yeah. looked like I liked it. It was against my health. Yeah, and quite naturally, it's probably shortened some of my days. I probably live. Maybe I might want to live that long if I am. <laughs> but you can't, yeah. you can't start over again. Uh, once time passes, it has passed. You can't you can't go back and regain time. Once yeah. once you lose it, it's it's, it's lost. And every once the train leave the station, you just done miss the train. You yeah. you gonna have to catch another train. Uh -huh. it, 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 is 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 that right? Yeah. yeah so, so I want you to know that clock is still ticking, young people, and and you need to take advantage of it now while you are young because. When you're old, you're not going to be able to go back and get it. Yeah. There was a lot of lies I used to tell myself when I get older, then I'll start going back to church. I went to church old I when I was young. I, yeah. Yeah, and my folks made me go to church. Uh -huh. yeah, and then right when I was 12 years old, I was teaching Sunday school. When yeah. I was about 13, I was the superintendent of the Sunday school. Yeah. I, I, you know, I was in there. I've been on the Urshia board. I've been on the deacon board. Yeah, sure. I, I sung in the choir. Played a little music for the Sunday school board. I was in there until yeah. I until I got old enough not to go. <laughs> yeah, no. And when I got old enough to go, I stopped going. Uh -huh. Isn't is, is that right? Because I'm I'm grown now. Oh, yeah, no. Isn't that right? I hadn't finished that school, but I was yeah. grown. Uh, are, are you hearing what I'm saying? I made I've made bad mistakes. I want you to know this. I haven't been perfect all my life, yeah. uh, isn't that right? And I wasn't in church every Sunday morning. I missed a lot of Sunday morning. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, are you listening until I learned better? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, isn't that right? But I want you to know those days are past and gone. I wish I could go back and get some of those days yeah. that were wasted. Yeah. If I could go back and get just half of the money that I wasted. Isn't that right? I was a spendthrift when I was young. And it came to me just like I spent it. Yeah, are, you, are you saying what I mean? I'll mean, show you how stupid your, your, your pastor used to be. So young people, I want you to know that you ain't the only one that ain't got it all. But there is hope for you. If, if you don't wait too, too, too late or too long, you can repent and go back to God and he will forgive you. He will redeem you. Are, are you and, and extend your days. God has been merciful to me. I, 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 I have been dead and then I've been brought back to the night. So I know God can give you life back. Uh, you and with that, I don't just be exaggerating. I know God is good. He, 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 and nothing is bigger than our God. Isn't that right? So I assume that he had something that he wanted me to do. And I'm willing to stay here until I find out what it is and, and try to do it. 
are, are you following me so far? So, so young people, what I'm trying to tell you is don't waste a lot of time because once time, anything you waste, you're going to one day want it. You waste your life, one day you're going to want a longer life. You waste your money, one day you're going to want some money. Yeah, you lose your friendship. You waste friendships by, by being mean and low down and evil to them. One day you're going to want a friend. You know what I'm saying? Anything you waste, you're going to one day want it. Are you, are you following me now? Yeah, so you don't want to mess around. And be careful how you treat people as you are getting older. Because those same folk you mistreat, you might have to come to that individual and ask for a favor. Yeah, is, is that right? Yeah, we find here that if you read Job 41, Job, Job had a problem with it too. He, he said, man that is born of a woman is of a few days. And in those days, what, are full of trouble? Isn't that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody don't necessarily have the same trouble. But you will have trouble in this life because of sin. Sin has uh, made it so where you're going to have some hardships, some ups, and some downs. Some you're going to have some valleys, and you're going to have some hills to to climb. Isn't that right? You you're going to have some sick days if you stay here long enough. Amen. You're going to have some days when your money run a little short. Isn't that right? Now you can have a lot of money and still just running short for what you need to do. Amen. You ain't got to be just flat broke to be running short. Now, are, are you hearing what I'm saying? You, 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 you're going to have some difficult days in your life, you understand? You know, with all the things that are going on, there were earthquakes and wars and rumors of wars and much slides and floods and fires and, yeah, and cancers and, you know, you know, all flus and all that other kind of stuff that's going around. In this life, you're going to have some hardship. And don't think just because you go to church, you're going to bypass all of this because, yeah, into each of our lives, some rain must fall. In other words, you're going to have some difficult times if you stay here long enough. The only reason you don't have it, you don't stay here long enough to go through that because it's, it's, it's out there for all of us. On every road, you will find that there is a rough spot somewhere. If you travel along enough on the expressway, you're going to hit a bump. The road going to get a little rough. It's going to be smooth for a while, but after a while, you're going to find some rough spots. Isn't that right? Yeah, so I want you to know that you need to take advantage of it now while, while you're able, while, 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 you're, while you're young and while you you know, can do some of the things that you want to do instead of sitting back wishing you could do. You know, you get old and you begin to do a lot of wishing and a lot of hoping. And if I could call back the hand of time and, and all that kind of, but it ain't coming back. No, sir. Hey, 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 are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah, the clock just keep on ticking. Uh -huh. hey, isn't that right? And you keep on getting older and older and you're getting closer and closer to the end of your road. Isn't that right? But Job said, even though we are just here for a moment and those days are full of trouble, he said, we spring up like a flower and we are soon cut off. But then he asked the question, he said, if a man, if a man die, shall he live again? In other words, since it looked like I'm missing some stuff as I go through here, if I die, will I live again and be able to? Can I get it when I come back the second time? Oh, y'all, you're saying you, you do a lot of thinking when you start getting older. Yeah, yeah isn't that right? Yeah, yeah, when I come back, and I believe that we are going to be resurrected. And, and when I come back, you understand, you understand, when I come back, will the next time be better than this time? And, and 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 I believe I believe we will. Isn't that right? Yeah, because I read where you know things are going to be like you know you 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 have not conceived, you have not even imagined the good stuff that God got for us. Uh, isn't that right? Not only that, but you want the, the, the next time you won't die. Yeah. Uh, and, and right, you're going to live forever. That's that's good, right there. Isn't that right? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of goodness that's going to be. But a lot of us don't want to wait to get the pie in the sky and the sweet by and by. You want your one right now, don't you? And I mean, but there is some good things in store for us right now if you live right. If you put your trust in God. If you lean and depend on him. If you are obedient to him, you can have some good days here on earth. Uh, 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 are, are you hearing what I'm saying? The, the joy of this conversation with Job is that the answer, if a man die, will he live again or shall he live again, is yes. yes. We all ought to get some joy there. So irregardless of whether we live a long time or a short time, when we die, we're going to live again. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, not a, you're going to live not only a long time, but you're going to live forever in his presence. You, you're going to be in the presence uh, <clears throat> of the Lord. Yeah, is, is that right? Yeah, and we shall live throughout eternity with the Lord. In our lesson today in the book of Genesis, let's get back there. We find that Joseph, is second in command in Egypt. Joseph is a Hebrew, but he's living in Egypt. He is second in command under Pharaoh. Pharaoh has entrusted Joseph with all of his riches, all of his goods, with all of his management, and it's all in Joseph's hands. Pharaoh didn't even know how much property he had or what goods he had or how much. He would have to go and ask Joseph, how much money do I have? How much brain do we have in the barn? Everything he wanted to know, he had to go to Joseph and ask him. So he had put it all in Joseph's hand. Now that's trust that he has put in the hands what, of a slave. That put in the hands of a slave. Are you trustworthy enough? For your boss to use you like that, can you trust? Can you trust your mate like that? Isn't, isn't that right? I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna mess with you on that one. You understand? But, but you, you, you need. I said it. I ain't scared. If I wanna know how much my assets are, I don't know. I have to ask my wife. I trust her like that. Uh, uh, you see, everybody can't trust their wife. Yeah, with the figures and with the, all the receipts yeah, and with all the charge cards. <laughs> are, are you listening? Are you listening to, listening to what I'm saying? But you need to be able to trust your spouse. Yeah. Ladies, you ought to be able to trust your husband. He ain't going to give it all to yeah. He ain't going to give it all to the little girl down there. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Great, great job. I know, I know it's hard to trust a man with money because men don't know what to do with their money there. You understand, you understand, but you understand if you trust him, you understand he might end up being trustworthy. Yeah, yeah. You don't know you can trust him until you do. Yeah. Now, 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 Joseph had come a long way. Yeah, yeah. In this life, you're going to have some hardships, and Joseph had some hardships too. Joseph had come all the way from the pit that was in Canaan. All the way to the palace on the hill in Egypt. That road was a rough road. Isn't that right? He had some hills to climb. He had some oppositions to, to go through. Yeah, yeah. His dream or his vision, yeah, back in Canaan land was a long way from the reality of Egypt. He had to go through a pit. He was sold into slavery. Yeah. He was lied on in Potiphar's house and put in prison. But if you read the story, you will find that all the way through, God was with him. Yeah. Joseph was faithful to God and God was faithful to him. Joseph leaned and depended on God. And God could depend on Joseph. So much so until he showed Joseph favor in the eyes of Pharaoh. 
and his dream came true that said that Joseph would be the head and that others would bow to him. Uh, are you listening? He was put in charge of all of the food, all of the grain, so that when others came to Egypt, they had to come to him and bow down to him and ask him for whatever it was that they needed. And it was in Joseph's hands whether or not he would let them have it or not. But it was a long way to that position. A lot of us just look at the end result and say, I would like to be in a position like that. I would like to be the mayor. Or I would like to be the president. Or I would like to be the governor. You understand? But it's a, sometimes it's a long road from where you start from to the vision that you have in the future. Isn't that right? As head administrator, you understand, in Egypt, we find that uh, when there was a famine in Canaan land, there was no food to eat for the people, neither for their flock or their cattle to eat. They had to leave Canaan land looking for sustenance. And most people would go to Egypt because Egypt was a fertile land. It was a land of plenty. Most through the Old Testament, when people had a famine, they would always usually turn and go to Egypt. Egypt was known, the Nile Valley, and in the Nile area was known for being fertile. It, you could raise things there, and you could live there relatively good because it was a, was a rich land. So we find that there was a famine in the land of Canaan. And Joseph's people found themselves in want. In other words, they wanted some food to eat for themselves, and they wanted food for their animals to graze and to eat. And they packed up and they went to Egypt. And those same brethren that had mistreated Joseph when he was a boy. Mistreated him because he had a dream that he would be over them. That they would be subservient unto him. They, they threw him in the pit. Lied to his father and said that he was dead. That a wild beast had killed him and Showed him his garment with blood on it. It was animal blood, but he, they told him that it was the blood of their brother Joseph. Now here we find these dysfunctional brothers. You could say this dysfunctional family. You know, we all have some dysfunctional people in our family. It ain't just Joseph, and, and I'm sure it ain't just me. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, and, yet, and we find that they went to Egypt not knowing that their brother Joseph was there. And surely they didn't know that their brother Joseph was in charge of the food supply. And when they got there, they didn't even know who Joseph was. He recognized them before they recognized him. Isn't that right? Yeah, yeah. But after a while, they did have a family reunion. After a while, his heart was softened and he was turned to having mercy on them because, you know, I don't care what your family have done to you. If they really need you, you have a tendency to want to help. You have to have a mighty hard heart not to feed your family if they get hungry. You have to have a mighty hard heart not to give them a couple of dollars if you find that they are behind on everything. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So it was with he and his family after the family reunion, after they got together. Yeah, he went and told Pharaoh, he said, my father and my brethren have left Canaan land and have come to Egypt. And they and their flocks are now in Goshen. It is the most fertile land that is in Egypt. They are now grazing there. And, and they've come here because they are lacking sustenance. They, they need food for their animals and they need food for themselves. Yeah, yeah. 
told Pharaoh, and then he brought them to Pharaoh. They stood before Pharaoh, and Pharaoh looked at them and asked the young men, the brethren, say, what is your trade? What is, yeah, what is it that you can do? In other words, what is your daily occupation? And he said, it is what? Shepherd. We are shepherds. And Pharaoh had compassion on them and told Joseph. Say, those brethren of yours that you find that are responsible, those that are, yeah, are dependable, those that manage well, I want you to put them in charge of my flock. He gave them a job. And he took care of them and their family. Then Joseph got his father Jacob and brought him before Pharaoh. And when he came before Pharaoh, the Bible says that he blessed Pharaoh. In other words, he prayed that God would be favorable upon Pharaoh. You Sometimes you have to pray for those that you call your enemies. Because sometimes it is those that call, uh, call your enemies are the ones that's going to have to help you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah, so you're going to have to be good to all of God's people. You're going to have to love those that God loves. Isn't that right? He doesn't hate people because they don't trust him or believe on him. God hates sin. He does not hate hurt people. So then God loves you whether you are a sinner or not. But it is what you are doing that is displeasing to God. Uh, are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah, and he brought his father before Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Jacob, he said, how old are you? Jacob said, uh, I am 130 years old. And few days have been evil. A few days have been bad in my life. In other words, I haven't always had it easy. And in my, in my days are few, even though I've had this hard time. I'm not even as old as my father was when he passed through this way. And he said unto Pharaoh, yes, he said, he said, he said I'm, I'm 130. To me, it seemed like an old age. But to him, he was complaining because he had not lived long, but yet his days had been rough. He had been cast from side to side. He was known earlier in life well, as one of the trickster. Yeah, yeah, he was the, the deceiver. He he did a lot of things that wasn't right in the sight of God, but yet it was predestined that he would be blessed, and that his offspring would what, be blessed. He was he was blessed basically after his name was changed to Israel. Is there anybody's name been changed yet? From a drunkard to a preacher. From, 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 <laughs> yeah, from a gambler to a Sunday school to, has, has anybody's name been, been, been changed? Uh, are you hearing what I'm saying? When God changes your name, he can also change your destiny. You know, he can change the plight. Yeah, yeah, he can change, you understand, the outcome of your, if you will just humble yourself and submit yourself unto the authority of God. Things don't have to stay the same. Some of us think because my daddy wasn't no good, I'm not going to be no good. My mama wasn't no good, so I'm not going to be any good. And I want you to know that things don't have to be the same. Because if you're born again, you got a newborn soul. And not only that, you got a new dad. Is that right? Yeah, you got a new father now in heaven, you understand? And he knows no sin. 
Isn't that right? And he's bigger than all of your problems. Isn't that, isn't that he's bigger than your valleys. He's bigger than your mountain. He, he's bigger than all of your sicknesses and all of your diseases. So, so I'm like my dad. Isn't that right? You understand? Again, I've been born again. I got a new birth certificate. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? My old one said I was born, yeah, at the mid. Yeah, better known as John Gaston. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but I've been born again. Uh, are you listening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I got a new destination. I got a new hope that is in Christ Jesus. Is, is, is that right? Is there anybody been what, born again? Yeah, I want you to know that you need to be born again. Pharaoh told Joseph to tell your brethren that they can live in Goshen. They can stay here in Egypt as long as there is a famine foot in the land. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want you to know that God will show favor not only on you, but God will show favor on your family. If you turn your life around, if you humbly submit yourself unto God, if you repent of your sin, bow down and acknowledge that God is God. I want you to know God can fix it. Yeah, he can fix your life where it doesn't even look like the way your life used to look. Isn't that right? We are not to compare our lives with others because others did not start where we started. We cannot measure how fast you are running by how fast I run. Yeah, because we didn't start from the same starting line. But I want you to know that wherever you started from really is not the real difference maker. But it's where you are headed yeah, and how bad do you want it? Who have you put your trust in? Isn't that right? Yeah, you can be running a long time and still not getting anywhere. And you can run a short while and look like you're making great strides. It's all in who you put your trust in. And I want to let not only the young but the middle age as well as the seniors know that we all need to put our trust in the Lord. For it is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are the sheep of his pasture and whatever the Lord wants us to have, we can have it if we so desire. If you have a need today, what you need to do is ask the Lord. And I'm sure he will give it. For I found out he will have mercy on you. Do you believe he will? Is it anybody ever ask the Lord? While thou art passing by. While on others thou art calling. Lisa, don't pass me by. I found out the Lord will stop by. The Lord will make a room for you. Ain't God all right? God is able to turn your situation around. I'm glad that I don't have to stay in a world like this throughout eternity. But one of these old days, God has something better for me. Do you think he has something better for you? Hey, God, all right. In this life, some rain must fall. But in the life that I'm about to kneel, it never rains. And the sun shines always. Hey, God, all right. In the land where I'm going, it's never Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but every day is just like Sunday. Thank God, all right. In the land where I'm 
never grow old. Do you know anything about that land? I can feast on milk and honey all day long. I can sing and never get tired. But a time we gonna have when all the children of God get together and sing a brand new song. Ain't God all right? Sing a song that the angels can't sing. Shout trouble over in the homeland of the soul. Ain't God all right? No more dark clouds will there be. No more crying and no more dying. No more heartaches and no more pain in the land that the Lord has prepared for me. Don't know when, but I do know how that the Lord is coming back for me. Is he coming back for you? The reason I know my name is in his book, in the book of life. And one of these days is going to open up the book and begin to call out names. And my name is in the book. A new name. Do you have a new name? When you call my name, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. And when you call my name, I will answer. Ain't God all right when he call you? Will you be ready to go? Ain't God all right? The reason I know I change my direction. I change my way of living. I change my way of walking. I change my way of talking. Did you change direction? Ain't God all right? I was on my way down. Now I'm on my way up. Ain't God all right? Do you know him? Have you ever tried him? Ain't he all right? He'll take you out of the pit pen. He'll take you out of the hall pen and put you in the palace. Won't he do it? He will change you from walking and give you something to ride in. Won't he do it? Stop you from sleeping out on the ground and give you a house to live in. Won't he do it? He can change your way of giving where you don't have nothing to share until you can give abundantly. Won't he do it? Is your name in the book? Hey, all right. The clock keep on ticking and my time is running out. But I'm glad that I got somewhere to go. When my time run out, when I get evicted from the house I live in, I got another home not made by man, not made by the hand of man, but built eternally in the heaven. Will you meet me there? I'm so bad. I got a home. I got a table to sit in. Ain't God all right? I'm peace with the law. Will you meet me there? The time keep on ticking. But you got time today. While the blood running warm in your veins. Tell the law, I'm sorry for the way that I'm here. I'm sorry for not giving you my time, my talents, and my resources. I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? Thank God, all right. I believe that Jesus died for me. Do you believe? I believe that he shed in his blood to wash away my sin debt. I believe that he hung on Calvary, yeah, till the sun refused to shine. 
I believe he died. Do you believe he died for your sins and mine? I believe they laid him in a Joseph new tomb. I believe for three days he stayed in the tomb. But early the sun the mouth he got up. Do you believe he got up? I was a there, but I believe he got up. I heard the angels by looking for the living among the dead. He's not here. He has risen as he said. Do you believe he got up? Do you believe he got up? Let me see you raise your hand. I believe he got up. With all power in his hand, power to move mountains, power to heal the sick, power to raise the dead, power to open doors that been closed in my face. Do you believe he got power? I know he got power to save a sinner like me. Are oh, you saying you want to tell somebody? I'm saved, I'm sanctified, I'm blood washed in the blood of the Lamb. I'm going home to be with the Lord. I'm going home to live with Jesus. Will you meet me there? Will I be a howdy, howdy, and never a goodbye? Will you meet me there? The door's open. The clock is ticking, but you still got time. The clock is ticking, but you still got time. Will you give God your life while you have a chance? Stay on the battlefield. I'm gonna stay on the battlefield. Stay on the battlefield. I'm gonna stay on the battlefield until. Father, in the name of Christ Jesus, blessed be your holy name. We thank you for the power of your word. May your word transform us to draw closer to you. May your word draw us to trust you even the more, to have faith in you even the more, for you are the faithful God. And it says in Revelations, you are faithful and true. And we thank you, Lord our God. And Lord, unto you, we acknowledge that we need you and we can't make it without you. And Lord God, we turn to you and we recommit ourselves to you, trusting you because you can change the destiny. You can change the trajectory. You can change, Lord, what no man can change. And we thank you right now. Now, Lord, may your grace, may your favor, may your blessings, both spiritually and physically, rest, rule, and abide on each household, on each person here. Lord God, bless their streets. Bless where they go, coming in and coming out. Give them favor, Lord, wherever they put their hand. Lord God, touch their children, grandchildren, nieces and nephews. Lord God, bless them indeed. Bless these babies, Lord. Father God, we thank you right now. 
Bless this church, Lord. Bless the every person, Lord. Bless our pastor. And not just Gilfield, not just Pastor Hall, but pastors and churches all over the land. Lord God, we thank you and we love you. Lord God, may your grace and your peace rule over us by your wonderful Holy Spirit. This we ask and we do believe that we receive right now. And we all said amen. Amen. And amen.